Hello, welcome to Ollie's Garage. Today I've got the Kawasaki Versys in here and we're gonna be replacing the chain and the sprockets. The reason you'd have to do this is either your sprockets get really worn as you can see in this picture right here, the teeth start getting worn off, or for me, really my sprockets are still in okay shape, but the chain links are starting to get tight in a few areas and now I can't properly tension the chain. As you can see, as I'm turning my tire right here, the chain links are a little bit stiff and the chain as it goes around will change in tension and that's not good. So I could just replace the chain, but I figured, ah, might as well replace the chain and the sprockets as well. Tools and parts wise, you're gonna need obviously some new sprockets. I've got the front and the rear right here. You're also supposed to replace this washer, but if I were a betting man, you could probably reuse it. You're gonna also need a chain breaking tool and then the chain as well. Aside from that, just normal hand tools. We're gonna to start by raising the rear wheel off with one of these motorcycle stands. Just simply roll it underneath these pegs right here. Make sure both sides are gonna be good. Lift it up, slowly tilt her over. I'm replacing the front sprocket and getting that nut loose is challenging if you don't have the rear wheel still installed because what we are going to do is use the rear wheel brake to hold everything from spinning. So to get to that front sprocket nut, first take off this cover. It's just one little screw right here. With the screw loose, there's two little pins right here. This one's actually broken on mine, but just carefully pull these straight back and then pull it up and out. That releases this little tab that goes in there. Now we're gonna remove this front sprocket cover. Two nuts right here. Next, we remove these two bolts right here. These are for the speed sensor. Next, we're gonna flatten out this washer so that we can get off the nut. I'm just using a chisel here very carefully. We care about the nut, not the washer, because we're replacing it. Now it's time to crack this engine sprocket nut loose. And if you don't have an impact wrench with a 27 millimeter, that would really speed up the process. But you can also just get a helper who's stepping on the brakes on the other side. And then you can just use your ratchet and a breaker bar or something along those lines to crack it loose. So he's on the brakes. Well, the breaker bar is not working because the brake seems to not quite hold it tight enough when we're really stepping on it, so we'll just use the impact wrench. Well, we're at the $200. Now I'm gonna remove the chain. The thing is, I don't wanna have to remove this axle bolt because I'm replacing it anyways, and the new chain already comes not put together, so I'm just gonna cut this sucker through. Now we can remove the chain. It's about the easiest chain removal you can do right there. Take this piece of junk to your metal recycler. Now I can remove this old sprocket here. This thing was just a little bit worn, actually not too bad. You can see just a little, this U is poking out that way. But I figured might as well replace it. It's all disgusting in there, so we're gonna spray it with a little bit of engine degreaser and clean it out. I'm not just gonna reassemble it when it's still all that dirty in there. sprocket right here and we're just going to grease the shaft a little bit in these threads and for this it says to use some molybdenum disulfide grease and I've got this old CV axle grease that I used from the other day from another project and we'll use that that meets the specification make sure that the letters are facing out if you have the original sprocket it'll say outside on it as you can see right here I don't and it looks like actually both of these sides on this new sprocket are the same on this one, there was a distinctive difference, but we're still gonna put the letters facing outwards. Slide it in place. Throw a little bit of grease on this side now, where this washer and the nut are gonna sit. 
Grab our new washer here from Kawasaki. Put the washer in place. One last round of a little bit of grease under the washer where the nut will be sitting. Grab the nut, start screwing it on. I'm just gonna make this hand tight for now and then we'll torque it once the chain's back on. Time to get to replacing the rear sprocket. To remove the axle, we're going to simply need to undo this cotter pin right here. Remove the rear axle nut, place it aside. Carefully remove this rear axle right here. Then we can slowly drop out the tire and I will get rid of the rear brake here. It just slides backwards and out like that. Then we can remove the rear tire. Now we don't just wanna hang the rear brake by the cable, so I always use this peg right here. And then you can just hang it in this bottom spot onto the peg. With the rear tire, we do not want to lay this on the ground. We need to support it somehow, because if this brake disc hits the ground, it's gonna bend it and then your brakes are gonna be all warped and they're gonna make weird sounds. So I'm just setting it on this dolly right here and now we get to these screws. Time to remove these nuts. I'm just gonna do it with the impact wrench because it really speeds things up. and off comes the sprocket. I've got my new sprocket here, and we're gonna install it so that these words are facing outwards, or the teeth number. So I actually played with the sprocket tooth number here just a little bit. This is a 46 tooth sprocket. This is now a 44 tooth sprocket. From reading online, people like to play with these. Everyone always goes up in the rear sprocket number so that they can you know, get going faster, but I don't want that. This bike has plenty of power at the low RPMs. First gear is already super short, so I actually wanted to go down in a few teeth, because if you remember to your bicycle when you were riding it around as a kid, when you put in the really small wheel in the back, you would pedal slowly and you would go really quickly. So my thought was if I get a slightly smaller rear sprocket, then I could potentially, you know, cruise a couple hundred RPM lower when I'm going down the interstate or just down the country road. So I've got this different sprocket here and I'll ride it around a little bit and then I'll let you guys know what I think about it. These nuts you're supposed to replace every time because they're locking nuts. The way I'm gonna mitigate that is I'm just gonna use a little bit of thread locker. This is the blue medium strength stuff, so it's not gonna lock it up forever. these is going to be 59 newton meters or 44 foot pounds. It really helps if you have a helper to hold the tire a little bit with these. And I always like to go diagonally. And I'm gonna check them one more time. There we go. Do want to just grease these seal lips a little bit so we can wipe off the old grease here. This just extends the life of that seal and since we don't take off the rear wheel that often, it's always good just to put a little bit of grease on there. For this, I'm just using some high temp disc brake grease, but you can probably get away with pretty much anything. These spots don't get that hot. The important part is to grease the inside of this seal. We want to fill this area between these two seal lips with grease and then just put a light coating on the part. One side good, let's do the other. Cool. 
Apply just a light coat of grease to this axle, nothing crazy. Now we can slide the rear wheel into place, grab this rear brake, and this caliper gets slid right onto this little stud in there. So we can slide it into place. There we go. And this thing can slide back and forth so that we can get our axle in. So don't be worried that this thing can move a little bit. Now carefully roll the tire forward, get it between these brake pads. I got it on this little chain box right here and then we can just roll it straight on. And these things are always annoying because they fall out. But as long as it's kind of at the right height, then it'll make the job a lot easier. Okay. All right, there we go. That's the hardest part is getting everything aligned right there and getting these little pieces inside. Now we can just slide the axle on through. This is where it helps if a helper can just lift on the tire ever so slightly. The lines on this block need to be vertical so that you can kind of count how many lines back it is on here and then you can just slide the axle through. The key to make installing this rear tire easy is to put something underneath it so that it's almost already at the correct height and you can just roll it on forward. If you're trying to lift the tire up, these little things will always fall out and then you'll never, it'll never work out. So just put something underneath it that gets almost to the right height, then you can just roll it on in. Here on the left side, we can slide this little block in, the washer and the axle nut. And we'll just make it hand tight for now. All right, here we have the new chain. This is the connecting link. And now we can start installing it. For this, I'm just gonna carefully start sliding it over the rear wheel here. We don't wanna get super dirty right away. I mean, it's gonna see the road, but you know. Now we just have to scoot the wheel on in a bit. Just a little more to make it easy to work. To scoot this in to give us a little bit of working room, we're just gonna loosen this chain adjuster on both sides, and then just screw this nut on in. One side done, and the other side is good now as well. Slide it in, there we go. The chain link came with these little O-rings. We apply a little bit of grease to this little chain link here for where the O-rings will go. Put an O-ring on. We have a whole packet of grease, so we'll apply a little bit more. Grease the shafts. You can send a little bit of grease in the backside of the hole here. That always works really well. And now let's connect the connecting link. Put a little bit of grease on the front. Put the seals and the other link on. There we go. Now we just have to press this on. We don't wanna press this too far because you'll bust out all the seals. The specification for pressing this together is it needs to be between 17.25 and 17.55 millimeters. That's where you can use one of these tools. The key is to make sure that these holes are on the front side here. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned for the first part. We just need to get it started. Give it a twist. There we go, it jumped on. Now that's already started and won't fall off, let's undo the tool. Make sure it's zeroed out. This is just a cheap caliber, but it'll still do the job. And let's measure it. Let's see here, 18.7. So I need to go to 17.5, so I've got about a millimeter and a half left to go. These pins are gonna end up being pressed through the outside of this link, so that's why we need to make sure that these holes are aligned. So, we can align the holes. Let's give another crank or two. All right, let's see where we're at. This is a tedious process. If you crank it on too tight, it's a real pain to undo these things. Trust me, I figured it out earlier today. 17.55. I'm not even gonna mess with it anymore. That looks pretty good to me. Now let's check. These bend pretty nicely. This bends pretty nicely too. Oh yeah, beautiful. Next we're gonna take our tool and we wanna flare these out 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this anvil and this is just gonna sit on the top, just on the back side. But as you can see, it actually doesn't sit on the link. It just sits on the pin, so that's perfect. We'll put that in the back. And then we're gonna get this end that's round a little bit like that. That's our flaring end. So we can put that through with the spring. Start tightening this sucker on down. We wanna go until this tool is recessed about two millimeters. Run this all the way down there till it's nice and centered, just like that. Tighten it ever so slightly, just so it doesn't move. We don't wanna tighten it too much, otherwise we're gonna squeeze our chain back together. And now we need to tighten this down. This needs to be flared out until it's 5.7 to six millimeters wide. Right now this pin is five millimeters wide, so we've got about a half a millimeter on each side to go. With that in mind, let's get to work. Take your 14 millimeter and just start turning in on this one right here. Again, it's important to spin this one, not this one. We don't wanna compress it. We just wanna flare it out. So let's give this about a half or a quarter of a turn. All right, let's undo it. Let's see how our work is. And let's measure it. All right, I have a little bit left to go. This thing's going crazy on me. I need to get a new one. Perfect. Again, this thing's losing its absolute mind. I just set it at the outside spec. We double check. Everything still moves really nicely. Now we can set our chain tension. To set the chain tension, we need to move this rear wheel back with these adjusters equally on both sides and these marks help you align that. So we have the one to one and a half inches of free play or 25 to 35 millimeters. We're now in the ballpark, so let's spin the wheel and we wanna put it to the tightest part of the chain. You just kinda of pay attention underneath here if there's any part where it's tighter. It's all pretty much the same. So now let's measure it. This is easier, metric's easier, 25 to 35 millimeters. So push all the way up, note where it's at, and then move it down 10, 20, yeah. That's right there, the 20 to 25 millimeters. Now we just have to make sure that both of these rear adjusters are in the same spot. So this one looks like it's just to the right of this line. So one, two, three, four. So let's check the other side. And one, two, three, four. So let's move this just to the back side of that one. Right about there. Let's spin this nut on. Tighten it down. The key is to tighten this and not have this move. Sometimes you need two wrenches. I got by with one. There we go. Let's double check our work one more time. Spin the wheel. Tightest part of the chain or so, all the way up to all the way down, 25 to 35 millimeters. That's right at it. Now we need to torque down this rear axle nut to 108 Newton meters or 80 foot pounds. In case yours doesn't quite as well line up as mine does and you don't get quite as lucky, um, the manual says if you get it just past the slot, kind of like where I'm at, just to loosen it and retorque it again. If this hole were to be right in the middle here, just to go until you can get the cotter pin in the next one. But since I just went past it, I don't really want to tighten it that much. I don't really want to loosen it again. And this cotter pin go in and it's just a safety device. This cotter pin is not to hold anything. It's just to keep every this nut on in case it comes starts coming loose. So now we can take some pliers. Tighten this sucker on up. Now we need to torque this crank nut to 125 newton meters or 92 foot pounds. There we go. Now we just need to carefully bend this washer over like how it was. Make sure that these dowels are still in place and then reinstall the speed sensor.
Torque the speed sensor bolts to 87 inch pounds or 10 Newton meters. We can now reinstall this cover. I also gave this a bit of a cleaning. Just make these snug. I go to the same thing, 87 inch pounds or 10 Newton meters. Grab the cover, slide in the bottom piece first. Carefully align the top piece and the side piece, snap it in place, and then tighten this down. And then I'm gonna snug it down to the same thing. There we go. It's only holding on a cover, so it's not gonna fall off. Make sure you have the kickstand down and I'll slowly let it off the ramps. As soon as that rear tire starts hitting the ground, just start pushing in the direction of the kickstand. It'll lay over beautifully. Remove the stand. Now the last thing that you have to do, or at least I have to do, is clean up all the mess of tools that I made and then I'm gonna take this thing for a spin. Now you can congratulate yourself on having saved a couple hundred dollars at the dealership. And if you do what I did and you clean everything in there, it'll be nice and clean. You know for a fact that the dealership isn't gonna clean everything in there because they're only getting paid on time. So the quicker they can just replace your parts, the better off they are. So congratulate yourself on knowing the shape of your motorcycle and that you did some good work to it today.